Hi, I'm Jackson and this is the Inside Rovers pre-match show. With five games to go, Rovers know it's now or never if they're to mount the biggest of comebacks in their fight for survival. Results over the last few days mean Gary McSheffrey's side are now eight points from safety, despite an improved performance at Wickham last time out. This weekend's opponent's crew are the only team below Rovers in the table, with the possibility of them being relegated on Saturday afternoon. It's a key battle at the bottom as Rovers take on Crew Alexandra. Hello, welcome back to the Eco Power Stadium and thank you to Jackson for that little introduction there as part of Junior Takeover Day, which we'll talk about a little bit more later on. But joining me on the show tonight to look ahead to this weekend's game against Crow Alexandra, Rovers media manager Liam Hoden and Rovers defender Cameron John. Cam, we'll talk a little bit more about your recovery later on, but after eight months out, edging closer to a return, that must feel unbelievably good. Yeah, um, obviously it's nice to be on the show again. Um, but yeah, it's been a very long journey for me. Um, and yeah, like you said, we're near the end, near the end, edging closer to getting back on that pitch. So that's just making me even more excited to, to get playing football again. Mm. And Liam, you've had a couple more weeks now to settle into your, your new role, which is not all that new now, is it? No, no, all still enjoying it uh, really uh, very much, you know, and uh, hopefully get a few more wins between now and the end of the season and uh, that'll uh, only add to it. Yeah, plenty to talk about then. Let's take a look at what's coming up on the show tonight. Gary McSheffrey talks getting more goals out of his side. We look ahead to Junior Takeover Day. And AD Turnpenny discusses why students should sign up to the Club Doncaster Sports College. Cam, it's been eight long months, I imagine, for yourself after playing that game against Rotherham in August. You've not really kicked a ball since in anger, have you? What's that been like, just to sort of paint the picture from, from your perspective? Yeah, it's, um, it was quite tough to be fair. Um, obviously, I got back, I got into the team at that point, and um, obviously, I think it was what international break after that, and we kind of just lowered myself down and found out the problem. It's been quite tough, um, a lot mentally more than anything. Obviously, seeing the seeing the boys out there, not really being able to do, uh, help them out in in the cause, and it's just been tough really because I can't do anything. But now we're edging closer and. Every day, it's just I just want to go and help the lads as much as possible, and you know, kick a ball again in anger, like you say, and try and help the team out as much as possible. With it being a back issue as well, you can't take any risk, can you? It's not like something you can run off, or you. Can, and I know you did try to to play through the pain barrier, obviously back in August. But when it's an issue like it was, was patience the biggest thing in allowing it to heal in the right way? Yeah, um, like you said, a back, your back's not nothing to play with. So I've really had to take my time, be patient, let it heal. I think we took a lot of precautions as well, um, especially the latter part of the later stages of my injury. So just to make sure that I am 100% and I can get around the pitch and start doing the things that I was good at and yeah, just get back playing and enjoy myself again. Liam Cam's one of a few players that's barely kicked a ball this season. I know he played in the first handful, but since then we've not seen him. We've not had Fayok and Abiri on the pitch. John Taylor's only played a couple of times. And, and more recently, of course, John Bostock's missed a fair chunk. Ben Close hasn't played since November. And, and when you look at all those, those players, I mean, Cam's still young, but pretty much one of the most experienced players in the squad in terms of league experience. Rovers have missed so much of that this season. It's been massive. We've talked about it a lot in terms of how much it's the been re forced to to rely on young lads and and the people like Cam who've, who've got plenty of games under the belt they had so much you know they've got that you know the awareness on the pitch the, the ability to to guide young players around as well and uh, I think that's been a, a big factor in, in why it's it's been a difficult season for Rovers. Cam has that made your layoff even more challenging the fact that the team haven't been doing well on the pitch and I suppose you're, you're so eager to get out there and try and make an impact but your hands are sort of tied along with many others this season. Yeah, um, like you said, it's been so tough trying to watch them and not being able to do nothing about it. So it's literally just been sit and watch and <laughs> just hope, praying really that mm. they find a way of getting it, turning it around. And obviously it's been a really difficult year. Like you've mentioned, not just myself has been out. There's been a lot of other key members that have also been out. So it's been really tough, but I'm still proud of the boys. They've, they're doing themselves proud and I know it's a difficult situation. And 
and I just you know I just want to go and help them now and try and give them that last little push so we can still fight survival but light at the end of the tunnel you've been in training of course a bit lighter at the start and then you've built yourself up gradually what have the last few weeks been like for you I imagine you've been like a kid at Christmas <laughs> yeah it's um I think at first it was um I think I was a bit too eager so I was kind of pushing myself but um but now I'm really starting to get in the flow of things and starting to feel a little bit more like myself before I got injured so yeah it's been it's been nice now goals have been the biggest issue for Rovers recently, none in their last five league games. But Gary McSheffrey says that those problems are not for a lack of trying. Uh, Gary, what's prevented you, do you think, from having the kind of run of consistent results that could be a real chance of, of getting out of this? You've had the odd good result, haven't you? Or good couple of results. You've not had that sort of long four or five game run that's really given you a chance to get out of the bottom four. And it's obvious goals. Uh, goal scorers, goals, going ahead in games, um, that's it's clear to see. And what's, what, 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 how do you get more goals? How do you, how do you put more goals into the, into the team? Just, just people stepping up and, and finishing off chances, finishing opportunities. Um, last week was pleasing that we got a good performance level again and actually created chances and, and opportunities to score. And then, you know, their goalkeeper had a good game, so uh, we just keep keep continuing to try and to try and create chances and, and be positive with what we do. As a manager, how do you try and turn those chances into goals? I mean, there's only so much you can do on a match day. It's up to the players to go and deliver. But in the week, is there anything that you can do? Is there anything that you have been doing to try and change your fortunes in that regard? Not really. We've been prepping well. We've been training well. It's it's uh, it's about turning up on a match day. You know, people people and players can train as well as they want. Um, some some need to train better because you can't just expect to turn up on a match day having not trained well in the week. Some train really well and then you know don't don't transfer that onto it onto the pitch on a Saturday. So um, as you say, yeah, it's, it's down to the players when when they go out there. But in terms of, of in the week, um, in a disappointing March, the actual build up in each week's training was the best I thought going into them. And again, we've had two. We've rolled out two really good weeks in the last two weeks, and we got a good performance last week. Not the result we wanted, but again, this week we've uh, there's no excuses, there's no stones unturned. Liam, when you look back at that, the Wickham performance, it wasn't a bad performance at all, really, was it? I mean, you look the, between the two penalty areas, there probably wasn't a awful lot in the game, despite Wickham being a team fancied for the playoffs and Rovers struggling like they are. But when Gary McSheffrey talks there about just keep persevering, keep trying and keep trying, you could see things starting to happen in that Wickham game, albeit without that final touch at the end of it. Yeah, it was really good to see, you know, that composure and confidence on the ball that we've perhaps not seen enough. You know, I think in, in recent games, there's it's felt like there's been a bit of pressure out there on the pitch and I think that was one where they kind of threw the shackles off a little bit and just you know just played and, and did produce what we know they're capable of some very very good technical footballers in this uh, in this squad and we saw some of that last week as you say missing that that final uh, you know that final piece of the jigsaw up front but it it gave you confidence that they can go and pick up results in the in these last few starting with this one this weekend Cam was perhaps the most frustrating thing about the Wickham performance, not necessarily just the lack of goals. It was that if Rovers had played to those standards, perhaps against Fleetwood, Charlton, Gillingham, Cheltenham, they'd probably get six points more on the board, if not more, and then you're all of a sudden looking at a different league table. Yeah, I think that might be just a frustrating thing all round that we can put a performance like that and how we played against a top team in, like Wickham. You just look back at them games where you kind of just think, Oh, what if we did play like that but those games are in the past now and hopefully we can just continue this form and like you said hopefully in front of the goal we can start you know hitting the back of the net and our fortune will change one of the bright sparks at Adams Park was John Bostock wasn't it I mean he's, he's come in after what four months out on the sidelines had a brief cameo appearance against Charlton but the way he dictated play from deep was everything that Rovers fans would have been hoping for from him when he first signed what, almost 18 months ago now yeah, again, a player that we know all about and his capabilities and what he can do when uh, when things go right for him. He found that space to, to really dictate the game. Played some fantastic balls, really linked things up really well. And again, hopefully he can kick on from here.
Cam, we know what your character's like. You like to be around the group and, and make people have a, a smile on the face, whether that's players, staff or whoever. Bozzy's, he's a calming influence, isn't he? I mean, you, you see him around the training ground. He's, he's, I suppose, a father figure to a lot of players, given what he's achieved in the game and, and his age as well. But how important is he in, in just calming people down and, and offering a different thought on things at times? Yeah, um, massive. Like I said, he's a calming influence, especially on that pitch gets us dictating play and get us passing the ball down so especially for the younger lads that have been playing it's going to do them the best of good that we've got someone in there now that can manage them but also manage the game the tempo of the game and speed us up at the right time so for the boys it's, it's a great great help for them to have and having Bostock in there seemed to unlock the door for Adam Clayton to have a bit more freedom didn't it so he wasn't just sitting in front of the back line, he was actually operating a bit more and getting into little pockets of space and caused Wickham some problems, particularly in the first half. Yeah, I think it, it, it was a good, great performance from, from Adam as well. I think that's been kind of one of the big things this season that you've not had necessarily the personnel out there to really complement each other, to, to really allow players to, to, sh to show what they're all about. You know, they've had to worry about other aspects of the game that, that, that probably are not their strong suit. So that was good to see. And again, again, it kind of touches back to, to that injury situation uh, that we discussed earlier. Mm. As I said earlier on, this Saturday is our annual junior takeover day and here are some of the children involved receiving the news about securing their match day roles. Liam, the junior takeover day is a great day, isn't it? For, for everyone involved, really. Myself and, and you will have the <laughs> little mini-me's running around and, and it's a different thing to, to have to think about. And I suppose, Cam, for, for you as players, seeing all that going on, it reminds you of, of when you were younger and, and obviously aspiring to, to be where you are now. Yeah, um, it will be a great day, not just for the kids, but for everyone else involved, especially us a lot, seeing them running around excited. And, uh, <laughs> you know, it might just put a smile on the boy's face and... You know, it might give them that extra lift as well to get them through the game. But yeah, it's a great day to be involved in, and yeah, can't can't wait. <laughs> yeah, for the kids and the parents, Liam, it's a different look, isn't it, to to how match days really go on. Whatever role they're doing, they'll see it from a different angle. Yeah, it was good to meet my uh, mini me Samuel the other day for the uh, pre-match presser, and you know they got to see that. You know, a few a few of the the youngsters who, who sort of our, our mini the the players and managers mini me's as well. They got to come and be involved in that, and that's that's offering a, an insight into what, what goes off during the week mm. at the club and they seem to really enjoy that and I'm sure there's so much that, that they'll get enjoyment out of the weekend as well. Yeah, we had them in the, the press conference, didn't we? First team players and managers, I've got to be pretty careful. Jackson did a great job in, in doing my job. I might have to watch myself in future. He'll be coming for me in the not so distant future. So great to see them down. Of course, they sat at the top table with, with Gary McSheffrey and Tommy Rowe and, and enjoyed all of that as well. Yeah, answered a few questions as well, you know, so, and, and posed some <laughs> yeah. decent questions as well. From, I think they put the uh, the media on the back foot in, <laughs> uh, in that one as well, but yeah, that was great to see. Mm. 
Cam, when you, you're looking around and you see the children, all the different roles, whether it's first team manager, first team player, or I mean, all the way to operations manager or whatever they're doing, how nice is it to, to have a look around and see it all going on? It's just another side, isn't it, of what the club offer on off the pitch as well? Yeah, it just shows how much of a family club that this club is and their desire to get everyone involved to make them feel welcome to this place. So yeah, it's a great thing to be a part of and it's going to be a great thing to see as well because you're going to see so many kids smiling and parents also being happy as well that their kids are involved. So it's just a great cause for not just the club but everyone involved. And it's a, a big day, isn't it, as well, for, for the football club. And to have that going on off the field as well, the hope is that they'll all go home with, with the certificates and, and smiles on faces. Yeah, it's a, it's a massive day for, for the club. And, and I like Cam touched upon, it can it can lighten the mood a little bit in, in what could be a fairly tense you know, environment. Um, but yeah, I think they're going to enjoy the day and they will enjoy it all the more if Rovers can pick up the three points. Is that the most important thing, Cam, you feel? in? Although in tough times this season, being able to, to still do the things that we pride ourselves on as a football club, it, it doesn't matter whether you're winning, losing or drawing, off the pitch you have to keep the same high standards of, in everything you do. Yeah, um, I think it can it can be easy just to you know, not really do the things that make the club so welcome and so loved. So for us to keep doing what we're doing off the pitch mm. and showing that we're still invested in you know the children, community etc, there's only going to keep them wanting to come and see us more and hopefully we can just get it right on the pitch to help us off the pitch as well. Now it's that time of the year again where the Club Doncaster Sports College are on the lookout for students and Principal Aidy Turnpenny and BTEC student Adam Morrison have been explaining what the college has to offer. Students are thinking about their exams obviously at this time of year and they're also turning to their attention to what they may be doing in September. Here at Club Doncaster Sports College, we've got uh, some fantastic courses for those who are interested in a career in sports, where they can combine playing for our academies, uh, as well as studying either at level two or level three on our sporting pathways. Hmm. And how do they go about sort of applying for that then? Is yeah. that something that they think that's the right move for me? Yep, so our prospectus uh, is uh, just being brought out, just been launched this, this uh, last couple of weeks. That's available online and also we have it in hard copy. Um, if anybody is interested in applying, they can go straight to our website www.clubdunkersportscollege.co.uk and apply from there. And of course, there are so many success stories, not only sort of out there in the community. We've seen Bobby come through Absolutely, the sports yeah. college. He's now obviously in the, in the got a professional contract uh, to his name. And, and but that's not all, is it? That it's not only that's the right. success stories that lead to the first team. That's right. Yeah, we're very much uh, interested in the academic side and potentially looking at the next PE teachers physiotherapist etc but uh, if you do have a talent in football or any sport Bob is a fantastic example of how he can progress with both of us uh, and within Club Doncaster. Mm. And it, you can see from the smiles on faces of the, the people who are here how, how good it is so that must be pleasing for you that people are going home and telling yeah. younger the younger generation of, of how good it is. Absolutely we're really proud of what we, we're doing here and more importantly what our students are doing we're getting some great results and again there's, there's nothing wrong with uh, working hard and enjoying yourself whilst you're doing it and I very much feel that uh, all our students get a great experience here, we get great support from all the tutors and of course with this environment of a stadium and uh, indeed the professional sports clubs within Club Doncaster, uh, we've got some fantastic uh, facilities and, uh, and uh, initiatives that help inform our sporting curriculum. Adam, as a student here, what's it like from your perspective? We've heard obviously the, the tutor's side of it. What's it like for you? As yeah, a student? it's brilliant. Um, you know, day to day, you get to experience new things, whether that's the, with the academy or whether that's the academic side. It's fantastic in terms of, you know, the um, support that you get from teachers and the lessons that you do are really insightful. So, yeah, it's really enjoyable. Hmm. Adi, how important are those open days? Yeah, our next there. one's on Thursday the 28th of April. Uh, they're really important. It's, it's informal, but it gives both prospective students and parents the opportunity to have a look around the college, chat with all the staff uh, and find out um, about what they can, they can do here with us. And as I said, that's not just a further education pathway for 16 to 18 year olds. We also now offer uh, degree programmes with our partners uh, Doncaster College and as I said earlier what better place to study sport than in live sports and environment. The next open day for the college is on Thursday April the 28th. It's a drop-in centre from 4.30 to 6pm. On to the on-field matters now gents. A massive game between bottom and second bottom. Of course the gap has got bigger now Liam as I said earlier on eight points with five to go. Rovers 
need a, a win more than ever this weekend. Well, Gary McSheffer has touched upon it in that he sees that they've got to win the last five matches, you know, and uh, it, it give themselves a chance. Obviously, the, this next one is the most important in that because uh, the situation can get pretty tough if uh, if they don't pick up the points this weekend. But yeah, it's it's absolutely massive. We've got to kick it off, and it's it's a game that. For, for the first time in a while, Rovers go into as favourites, given obviously the position in the league table, given the, the form of, of crew as well. So they've got to take advantage of that. Cam, Gary said that Rovers have got to win every game, but is the easiest way of, of trying to do that just focusing on solely the next fixture? Yeah, um, we, we don't know what the other four games are going to be like. So for now, we've just got to focus on crew. Um, and like you said, it is a must win game for us, and we just got to find a way I don't think at this point it matters anymore I think we just got to find a way to win and yeah hopefully we, we do get the job done Tommy Rowe made an interesting point Liam on Thursday that Rovers have because it's all been about results maybe they've taken their eye off the performance in recent weeks whereas last week at Wickham the focus was a bit more on performance and that came without the result but if you can try and marry those two together against what is a vulnerable crew team you've got a good chance of coming away with three points definitely I think that, as you say that's what we saw that's pl taking them shackles off a little bit you know playing with without that pressure on the backs and, and, and we saw what it, what it delivered against one of the, the best one of the most organised teams in the division. We saw it a, just a couple of months ago with the, the big away results that, that Rovers picked up as well, playing without that bit of pressure and allowing that performance to come to the fore. It made a big difference last week. The next stage now is to go on and, and get that win on, on the back of a good performance. Because crew are where they are for a reason. They could go down on Saturday. Rovers need to sort of take advantage of those vulnerabilities because they're a team who've conceded, I think, three or more goals on 14 occasions this season, which is a remarkable stat, isn't it? But it does paint the picture as to why they are where they are. It is, you know, that, that, that the cold hard facts of it, they've lost 14 out of the last 15 matches in the league. You know, you've got to take advantage of that. You've got to sort of uh, turn the screw on them and, and, and get what Rovers need to get. You know, they, a win for, for crew is probably not enough. You know, they 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 pretty much done and dusted, it, may, it must be said. Rovers have got to take advantage, take the game by the scruff of the neck. Something that Tommy Rowe touched upon as well, starting fast, getting this place believing, you know, getting the supporters, making some noise in the stands, starting fast and, and really putting crew on the back foot. The position that they're in at the minute, you know, p give them an early blow and hopefully that's that paves the way for a fairly comfortable afternoon. Hey, it's Cam, although there is... There has been a lack of goals recently. All of a sudden, if one goes in, that could be the trigger, couldn't it, for, for three or four? Who knows? It, it could be that one thing that needs to go in Rovers' favour that then all of a sudden opens things up. Yeah, I think, I think that's what we're all hoping for at this point as well. Um, like you said, we just need one and hopefully that will open the floodgates for us to um, score even more. And like you said, the game Saturday is a great game for us to show show that we can put the performance and the result in the same game. So hopefully we can we can do that and start these last five games on a positive note. Cam, fingers crossed we see you on the pitch on Saturday. Liam, I'll just ask you for a score prediction. I won't put Cam under too much pressure. We'll definitely take a 1-0, but I'm, I'm a bit more confident that it might be a little bit wider than that. So, I'll, But I'm not going to man, I'll say 2-0. <laughs> Liam, Cam, thank you for your company. Thank you at home for watching on as well. Get down to the Eco Power Stadium this weekend. It's a massive game at the bottom end of the table as Rovers take on Crew Alexandra.